morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the blacksmith shop. The blacksmith was one of the more important people in town. He made most, if not all, of the uh, iron work that was used in your community. He made boot buckles, belt buckles, cast hinges, punches, hammers, nails, and the apprentice smiths were required to make between three and five hundred nails a day from about ten years old on up. The older you got, the heavier the industry was for the stuff that you made. Uh, this is a forge over here. It's got a blower that blows air from the tube down into the bottom and comes up, if not lit this morning, because we do not wish to burn anything. The anvil behind me was necessary with a pair of tongs like it's hanging here. You grab the iron out of the fire, take it to the anvil, and forge it out or beat it out while it's hot. When the iron is red hot, it is plastic to the point that you can move it fairly easily. You have to be very careful, and that's why you see me wearing heavy boots. Your tennis shoes and stuff, if a piece of iron pops off in your shoe, you will be doing the Mexican hat dance into the slack cut, by which time you will already have a second or third degree burn. And they take a long, long time to heal up, trust me. Uh, I make my own punches and chisels out of springs, foil springs. Uh, this is another type of anvil standing here. You can see the different shapes that are made into it. You can make dippers, ladles, spoons. Around the outside edge are different shapes that you can hammer the iron into depending on what you need or what was ordered. Your, most of your stuff back in the 1800s from this part of the world back to St. Louis, which was the distribution hub for a lot of the stuff, was six months. So if you put your order in today, it'd be six months before your order made to the merchant back there. And then it was another six months, he would fill your order and it would take six months to get back out here to you. So, no UPS or FedEx or anything like this. Most of the freight wagons carried their own blacksmith with them. They carried an anvil and a forge to make repairs along the road. The heavier repairs, they would stop and avail themselves of a larger, heavier industry shop along the way. Uh, Coal was most generally, if it was available, was used because of the, it just lends itself better to what the blacksmith was doing. Now you can forge with charcoal, but it doesn't get nearly as hot and it burns up a lot quicker. You can see my tool carrier has several hammers and also what they call hot cut cut the iron. Back when these were operating shops on a daily basis, there was no high speed steel, which meant, which is what they make your drill bits out of, your hacksaws and stuff like this. It just was not available. If you needed a hole in a piece of iron, you hot punched it. In other words, you brought the iron out red hot, put it on the anvil, took a punch of the appropriate size, hit it, and then turned it over. And over the critchel or hardy hole, you sheared out that size. Or if it was needed a little bit bigger, you simply 
wedged it out with the punch or the chisel. Chisels were used to cut things, shape things, whatever. I will stop talking and entertain any, I will try to answer any questions that you may have. Anybody? Yes, dear. Um, can you make metal arrows? Can you make metal arrows? Arrows? Most generally the arrows were made out of wood and then fletched with turkey or chicken or whatever kind of feathers. The arrow tips were made out of metal. Yes, I can and I have made. Yes. What's the Sunny D bottle for? The what? Sunny D bottle. Oh, that's my extra water. <laughs> and it's going to get rather warm this afternoon. Yes. Have you ever made horses? Horses? Yes, I have. And the last group that I talked to, one of the smiths that I blacksmith with, he raised five boys shoeing horses. He did a demonstration and there were two of us with stopwatches. From the moment he pulled that bar stock out of the fire until he had a viable shoe to put on a horse was 58 seconds. And that was the horseshoe turned, the toe turned, the heel turned, and all the holes punched. Yes. Um, was <laughs> when you take it out of the fire, is it like fully melted, or is it like, uh, is it melted once like one of the, or does it, is it still hard? And then you know one of those things that you like hold like this and you can grab it and you just pull the it. They're called tongs. They're just a longer set of well, I was, I was gonna ask pliers, yeah. and these are horribly, horribly, horribly short because that is very, yeah, very hot. Most of the iron will be the color of his shirt. Well, is it melted or is it melted or is it like this? Well, just before it melts, we don't want it melted because I can't pick up the whole thing. Now, I have been talking to groups like you people and not paying attention with my forge going and I'll sit there cranking and I have burnt up a piece this thick by this thick and that long, melted it and dropped it in the bottom of my fire. I had to fish the junk out of the bottom of my fire. Yes. How long does it take to make one hole in a horseshoe? <coughs> if you're good at it and you are doing it on a daily basis, two to three seconds. Because he will. Is that a what is it? No. But yeah, the, uh, the hot punching. The hot punching takes time and it's stronger than a hole that's been drilled with a drill bit. Any other questions? Over there, is he? This? That is a post drill. It's cranked my hand and I do have drill bits. That's a more modern that was built late 1800. Yes. This? That's an anvil. That is what I put the iron on and beat it with a hammer. Beat it into shape. I make an anvil, it's a specialized shop, and they make them, I'd say within about an hour. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.